Shenandoah National Park often is a national park that encompasses part of the Blue Ridge Mountains in the U.S. state of Virginia. The park is long and narrow, with the broad Shenandoah River and Valley on the west side, and the rolling hills of the Virginia Piedmont on the east. Although the scenic skyline drive is likely the most prominent feature of the park, almost 40% of the land area 79,579 acres, 124.3 square miles, 322.0 square kilometers has been designated as wilderness and is protected as part of the National Wilderness Preservation System. The highest peak is Hawksbill Mountain at 4,051 feet, 1,235 meters. Geography The park encompasses parts of eight counties. On the west side of Skyline Drive they are, from northeast to southwest, Warren, Page, Rockingham, and Augusta counties. On the east side of Skyline Drive they are Rappahannock, Madison, Green, and Albemarle counties. The park stretches for 105 miles km along Skyline Drive from near the town of Front Royal in the northeast to near the city of Waynesboro in the southwest. The park headquarters are located in Luray. Geology <laughs> 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 Shenandoah National Park lies along the Blue Ridge Mountains in north-central Virginia. These mountains form a distinct highland rising to elevations above 4,000 feet meters. Local topographic relief between the Blue Ridge Mountains and Shenandoah Valley exceeds 3,000 feet meters at some locations. The crest of the range divides the Shenandoah River drainage basin, part of the Potomac River drainage, on the west side, from the James and Rappahannock River drainage basins on the east side. Some of the rocks exposed in the park date to over one billion years in age, making them among the oldest in Virginia. Bedrock in the park includes Grenville Age granitic basement rocks, 1.2 to 1.0 billion years old, and a cover sequence of metamorphosed Neoproterozoic, 570 to 550 million years old, sedimentary and volcanic rocks of the Swift Run and Catoctin formations. Columns of Catoctin formation metamorphosed basalt can be seen at Compton Peak. Clastic rocks of the Chilowee group are of early Cambrian age, 542 to 520 million years old. Quaternary surficial deposits are common and cover much of the bedrock throughout the park. The park is located along the western part of the Blue Ridge Anticlinorium, a regional scale Paleozoic structure at the eastern margin of the Appalachian Fold and Thrust Belt. Rocks within the park were folded, faulted, distorted, and metamorphosed during the late Paleozoic Alleghenian orogeny, 325 to 260 million years ago. The rugged topography of Blue Ridge Mountains is a result of differential erosion during the Cenozoic, although some post-Paleozoic tectonic activity occurred in the region. History Creation of the park Legislation to create a national park in the Appalachian Mountains was first introduced by New Virginia Congressman Henry D. Flood in 1901, but despite the support of President Theodore Roosevelt, failed to pass. The first national park was Yellowstone, in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. It was signed into law in 1872. Yosemite National Park was created in 1890. When Congress created the National Park Service in 1916, additional parks had maintained the western pattern Crater Lake in 1902, Wind Cave in 1903, Mesa Verde in 1906, then Denali in 1917. Grand Canyon, Zion and Acadia were all created in 1919 during the administration of Virginia-born President Woodrow Wilson. Acadia finally broke the western mold, becoming the first eastern national park. It was also based on donations from wealthy private landowners. Stephen Mather, the first NPS director, saw a need for a national park in the southern states, and solicited proposals in his 1923 year-end report. 
In May 1925, Congress and President Calvin Coolidge authorized the NPS to acquire a minimum of 250,000 acres, 390.6 square miles, 1011.7 square kilometers, and a maximum of 521,000 acres, 814.1 square miles, 2108.4 square kilometers to form Shenandoah National Park and also authorized creation of Great Smoky Mountains National Park. However, the legislation also required that no federal funds would be used to acquire the land. Thus, Virginia needed to raise private funds, and could also authorize state funds and use its eminent domain condemnation power to acquire the land to create Shenandoah National Park. Virginia's Democratic gubernatorial candidate and the late Congressman Flood's nephew, Harry F. Byrd supported creation of Shenandoah National Park, as did his friend William E. Carson, a businessman who had become Virginia's first chairman of the Commission on Conservation and Development. Development of the Western National Parks had assisted tourism, which produced jobs, which Byrd and local politicians supported. The land that became Shenandoah Park was scenic, mountainous, and had also lost about half of its trees to the chestnut blight which was incurable and affected trees as they reached maturity. However, it had been held as private property for over a century, so many farms and orchards existed. After Byrd became governor and convinced the legislature to appropriate $1 million for land acquisition and other work, Carson and his teams including surveyors and his brother Kit who was Byrd's law partner tried to figure out who owned the land. They found that it consisted of more than 5,000 parcels, some of them inhabited by tenant farmers or squatters who were ineligible to receive compensation. Some landowners, including wealthy resort owner George Freeman Pollock and Luray realtor and developer L. Ferdinand Zirkel, had long wanted the park created and had formed the Northern Virginia Park Association to win over the National Park Selection Committee. However, many local families who had lived in the area for generations especially people over 60 years old did not want to sell their land, and some refused to sell at any price. Carson promised that if they sold to the state, they could still live on their homesteads for the rest of their lives. Carson also lobbied the new president Herbert Hoover, who bought land to establish a vacation fishing camp near the headwaters of the Rapidan River and would ultimately donate it to the park as he left office, it remains as Rapidan Camp. The Commonwealth of Virginia slowly acquired the land through eminent domain, and then gave it to the U.S. federal government to establish the national park. Carson's brother suggested that Virginia's legislature authorize condemnation by counties followed by arbitration for individual parcels rather than condemn each parcel. Some families accepted the payments because they needed the money and wanted to escape the subsistence lifestyle. Nearly 90% of the inhabitants worked the land for a living, selling timber, charcoal or crops. They had previously been able to earn money to buy supplies by harvesting the now rare chestnuts, by working during the apple and peach harvest season but the drought of 1930 devastated those crops and killed many fruit trees, by selling handmade textiles and crafts displaced by factories and moonshine illegal after prohibition started. However, Carson and the politicians did not seek citizen input early in the process, nor convince residents that they could live better in a tourist economy. Instead they started with an advertising campaign to raise the funds, and courthouse property evaluations and surveys. Upon Mather's death in 1929, the new NPS director, Horace M. Albright also decided that the federal agency would only accept vacant land, so even elderly residents would be forced to leave. Thus, many families and entire communities were forced to vacate portions of the Blue Ridge Mountains in eight Virginia counties. Although the Skyline Drive right-of-way was purchased from owners without condemnation, the costs of the acreage purchased trebled over initial estimates and the acreage decreased to what Carson called a «fish bone» shape and others a «shoestring». Although Byrd and Carson convinced Congress to reduce the minimum size of Shenandoah Park to just over 160,000 acres (250.0 square miles, 647.5 square kilometers) to eliminate some high-priced lands, in 1933, newly elected President Franklin D. Roosevelt decided to also create the Blue Ridge Parkway to connect to then under construction Skyline Drive on the Shenandoah National Park ridgeline, which required additional condemnations. When many families continued to refuse to sell their land in 1932 and 1933, proponents changed tactics. Freeman hired social worker Miriam Sizer to teach at a summer school he had set up near one of his workers' communities, and asked her to write a report about the conditions in which they lived. 
Although later discredited, it depicted the local population as very poor and inbred, and was soon used to support forcible evictions and burning of former cabins so residents would not sneak back. University of Chicago sociologists Faye Cooper Cole and Mandel Sherman described how the small valley communities or hollows had existed, "...without contact with law or government." For centuries, which some analogized to a popular comic strip Lil Abner and his fictional community Dogpatch. In 1933, Sherman and journalist Thomas Henry published Hollow Folk drawing pitying eyes to local conditions and hillbillies. As in many rural areas of the time, most remote homesteads in the Shenandoah lacked electricity and often running water, as well as access to schools and health facilities during many months. However, Hoover had hired experienced rural teacher Christine Vest to teach near his summer home and who believed the other reports exaggerated, as did Episcopal missionary teachers in other Blue Ridge areas. Carson had had ambitions to become governor in 1929 and 1933, but Byrd instead selected George C. Peary of the state's southwest corner to succeed Easterner Pollard. After winning election, Peary and Carson's successor would establish Virginia's state park system, although plans to relocate reluctant residents kept changing and basically failed. Carson had hoped to head that new state agency, but was not selected because of his growing differences with Byrd, over fees owed his brother and especially over the evictions that began in late 1933 against his advice but pursuant to new federal policies and that garnered much negative publicity. Most of the reluctant families came from the park's central counties Madison, Page, and Rappahannock, not the northern counties nearest Birds and Carson's bases, nor from the southern end where residents could see tourism's benefits at Thomas Jefferson's Monticello since the 1920s, as well as the jobs available in the Shenandoah and New Blue Ridge projects. In 1931 and 1932, residents were allowed to petition the state agency to stay another year to gather crops, etc. However, some refused to cooperate to any extent, others wanted to continue to use resources now protected including timber or homes and gardens vacated by others, and many found the permit process arbitrary. Businessman Robert H. Via filed suit against the condemnations in 1934 but did not prevail and ended up moving to Pennsylvania and never cashed his condemnation check. Carson announced his resignation from his unpaid job effective in December 1934. As one of his final acts, Carson wrote the new NPS director, Arno B. Kammerer, urging that 60 people over 60 years old whose plots were far and not visible from the new Skyline Drive not be evicted. When evictions kept creating negative publicity in 1935, photographer Arthur Rothstein coordinated with the Hollow Folk authors and then went to document the conditions they claimed. Creation of the park had immediate benefits to some Virginians. During the Great Depression, many young men received training and jobs through the Civilian Conservation Corps CCC. The first CCC camp in Virginia was established in the George Washington National Forest near Luray, and Governor Pollard quickly filled his initial quota of 5,000 workers. About 1,000 men and boys worked on Skyline Drive, and about 100,000 worked in Virginia during the agency's existence. In Shenandoah Park, CCC crews removed many of the dead chestnut trees whose skeletons marred views in the new park, as well as constructed trails and facilities. Tourism revenues also skyrocketed. On the other hand, CCC crews were also assigned to burn and destroy some cabins in the park, to prevent residents from coming back. Also, U.S. Secretary of the Interior Harold Ickes who had jurisdiction over the NPS and partial jurisdiction over the CCC, tried to use his authority to force Byrd to cooperate on other New Deal projects. Shenandoah National Park was finally established on December 26, 1935, and soon construction began on the Blue Ridge Parkway that Byrd wanted. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt formally opened Shenandoah National Park on July 3, 1936. Eventually, about 40 people on the X list were allowed to live out their lives on land that became the park. One of them was George Freeman Pollock, whose residence Killahevlin was later listed on the National Register, and whose Skyland Resort reopened under a concessionaire in 1937. Carson also donated significant land. A mountain in the park is now named in his honor and signs acknowledge his contributions. The last grandmothered resident was Annie Lee Bradley Shank. NPS employees had watched and cared for her since 1950, she died in 1979 at age 92. Most others left quietly. 
85-year-old Hezekiah Lamb explained, I ain't so crazy about leaving these hills but I never believed in being Agan against the government. I signed everything they asked me. Segregation and desegregation In the early 1930s, the National Park Service began planning the park facilities and envisioned separate provisions for blacks and whites. At that time, in Jim Crow, Virginia, racial segregation was the order of the day. In its transfer of the parkland to the federal government, Virginia initially attempted to ban African Americans entirely from the park, but settled for enforcing its segregation laws in the park's facilities. By the 1930s, there were several concessions operated by private firms within the area that would become the park, some going back to the late 19th century. These early private facilities at Skyland Resort, Panorama Resort, and Swift Run Gap were operated only for whites. By 1937, the Park Service accepted a bid from Virginia Sky Line Company to take over the existing facilities and add new lodges, cabins, and other amenities, including Big Meadows Lodge. Under their plan, all the sites in the parks, save one, were for "...whites only." Their plan included a separate facility for African Americans at Lewis Mountain—a picnic ground, a smaller lodge, cabins and a campground. The site opened in 1939, and it was substantially inferior to the other park facilities. By then, however, the Interior Department was increasingly anxious to eliminate segregation from all parks. Pinnacle's Picnic Ground was selected to be the initial integrated site in the Shenandoah, but Virginia Sky Line Company continued to balk, and distributed maps showing Lewis Mountain as the only site for African Americans. During World War II, concessions closed and park usage plunged. But once the war ended, in December 1945, the NPS mandated that all concessions in all national parks were to be desegregated. In October 1947 the dining rooms of Lewis Mountain and Panorama were integrated and by early 1950, the mandate was fully accomplished. <laughs> Social history Particularly after the 1960s, park operations broadened from nature focused to include social history. The Potomac Appalachian Trail Club had restored some cabins beginning in the 1940s, and made them available to overnight hikers. Some displaced residents and their descendants created the children of the Shenandoah to lobby for more balanced presentations. In the 1990s, the park hired cultural resource specialists and conducted an archaeological inventory of existing structures, the survey of rural mountain settlement. Eventually, the park's new focus on cultural resources coincided with agitation from a descendants organization known as the Children of Shenandoah, which resulted in the removal of questionable interpretive displays. Hikes and tours that explained the social history of the displaced mountain people began. Attractions Skyline Drive The park is best known for Skyline Drive, a 105-mile road that runs the length of the park along the ridge of the mountains. 101 miles of the Appalachian Trail are also in the park. In total, there are over 500 miles kilometers of trails within the park. There is also horseback riding, camping, bicycling, and a number of waterfalls. The Skyline Drive is the first National Park Service road east of the Mississippi River listed as a National Historic Landmark on the National Register of Historic Places. It is also designated as a National Scenic Byway. Backcountry camping Shenandoah National Park offers 196,000 acres, 306.2 square miles, 793.2 square kilometers of backcountry and wilderness camping. While in the backcountry, campers must use a leave no trace policy that includes burying excrement and not building campfires. Backcountry campers must also be careful of wildlife such as bears and venomous snakes. Campers must suspend their food from trees while not in use in bear bags or park approved bear canisters to prevent unintentionally feeding the bears, who then become habituated to humans and their food and therefore dangerous. 
All animals are protected by federal law. Topic: Lodging. Topic: Campgrounds and cabins. Most of the campgrounds are open from April to October to November. There are five major campgrounds Matthews Arm Campground Big Meadows Campground Lewis Mountain Campground Loft Mountain Campground Dundo Group Campground Lodges There are three lodges, cabins Skyland Resort Big Meadows Lewis Mountain Cabins Lodges are located at Skyland and Big Meadows. The park's Harry F. Bird Visitor Center is also located at Big Meadows. Another visitor center is located at Dickey Ridge. Campgrounds are located at Matthews Arm, Big Meadows, Lewis Mountain, and Loft Mountain. Rapidan Camp, the restored presidential fishing retreat Herbert Hoover built on the Rapidan River in 1929, is accessed by a 4.1-mile round-trip hike on Mill Prong Trail, which begins on the Skyline Drive at Milam Gap mile The NPS also offers guided van trips that leave from the Bird Center at Big Meadows. Shenandoah National Park is one of the most dog-friendly in the national park system. The campgrounds all allow dogs, and dogs are allowed on almost all of the trails including the Appalachian Trail, if kept on leash six feet or shorter. Dogs are not allowed on ten trails, Fox Hollow Trail, Stony Man Trail, Limberlost Trail, Post Office Junction to Old Rag Shelter, Old Rag Ridge Trail, Old Rag Saddle Trail, Dark Hollow Falls Trail, Story of the Forest Trail, Bearfence Mountain Trail, Fraser Discovery Trail. These 10 trails fall short of a total of 20 miles of the 500 miles of trails of the Shenandoah National Park. Streams and rivers in the park are very popular with fly fishermen for native brook trout. Topic: <laughs> Waterfalls. Many waterfalls are located within the park boundaries. Below is a list of significant falls. Hiking trails <laughs> Dark Hollow Falls Trail Beginning at mile 50.7 of the Skyline Drive near the Bird Visitor Center, Dark Hollow Falls Trail leads downhill beside Hogcamp Branch to Dark Hollow Falls, a 70-foot cascade. The distance from the trailhead to the base of the falls is 0.7 mile, although the trail continues beyond that point, crossing the creek and connecting with the Rose River Fire Road. Various fauna can be viewed along the trail, including occasional sightings of black bear and timber rattlesnake. While the trail is relatively short, parts of it are steep and may prove challenging to some visitors. There is no view from the brink of the falls, and slippery rocks make it inadvisable to leave the trail. Ecology The climate of the park, and in turn also its flora and fauna, is largely typical for mountainous regions of the eastern mid-Atlantic woodland, and indeed a large portion of common species are typical of ecosystems at lower altitudes as well. On southwestern faces of some of the southernmost hillsides pine predominates and there is also the occasional prickly pear cactus, which grows naturally. In contrast, some of the northeastern aspects are most likely to have small but dense stands of moisture-loving hemlocks and mosses in abundance. Other commonly found plants include oak, hickory, chestnut, maple, tulip poplar, mountain laurel, milkweed, daisies, and many species of ferns. The once predominant American chestnut tree was effectively brought to extinction by a fungus known as the chestnut blight during the 1930s. Though the tree continues to grow in the park, it does not reach maturity and dies back before it can reproduce. Various species of oaks superseded the chestnuts and became the dominant tree species. Gypsy moth infestations beginning in the early 1990s began to erode the dominance of the oak forests as the moths would primarily consume the leaves of oak trees. Though the gypsy moths seem to have abated some, they continue to affect the forest and have destroyed almost 10% of the oak groves.
Topic: <inaudible> Wildlife. <inaudible> 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 Mammals include black bear, coyote, striped skunk, spotted skunk, raccoon, beaver, river otter, opossum, woodchuck, two species of foxes, white-tailed deer, and eastern cottontail rabbit. Though unsubstantiated, there have been some reported sightings of cougar in remote areas of the park. Over 200 species of birds make their home in the park for at least part of the year. About 30 live in the park year-round, including the barred owl, Carolina chickadee, red-tailed hawk, and wild turkey. The peregrine falcon was reintroduced into the park in the mid-1990s and by the end of the 20th century there were numerous nesting pairs in the park. 32 species of fish have been documented in the park, including brook trout, longnose and eastern blacknose dace, and the bluehead chub. <laughs> Ranger programs Park rangers organize several programs from spring to fall. These include ranger-led hikes, as well as discussions of the history, flora, and fauna. <laughs> Artist-in-residence program In 2014, under the leadership of Superintendent Jim Northup, Shenandoah National Park established an artist-in-residence program that is administered by the Shenandoah National Park Trust, the park's philanthropic partner. Photographer Sandy Long was selected as the park's first artist-in-residence. The results of Long's residency were featured in the photography exhibit, "'Wild Beauty – The Artful Nature of Shenandoah National Park' held at the Looking Glass Art Gallery in the historic Holly Silk Mill, in Holly, Pennsylvania. See also List of amphibians of Shenandoah National Park List of national parks of the United States Humpback Rock Knob Mountain Neighbor Mountain Old Rag Mountain Pignut Mountain